Hi everyone, I am Matteo Collina, Platformatic co-founder and CTO, and today we are going to talk about Node.js. So, a uh, few things, I wear shades because I got, just got a little bit of uh, eye surgery in the last few days and I really needed to record this, so um, uh, sorry for the shades, okay? So anyway, going back in, uh, we are going to talk about Node. And we are going to talk about the fact that the alleged end of Node.js is much ado about nothing, as quoting Shakespeare. What does this mean? Well, we'll dig in. So, uh, but first, a couple of things about me. As I said, I'm co-founder and CTO of Platformatic, but also part of the Node.js Technical Steering Committee. So uh, you can, you know, possibly I have a, a privileged view about the project, but also I am a board member of the OpenJS Foundation as well as um, I created Fastify and Pino, and as well as being a, a eight-year consultant working on Node, then I've done a startup, whatever, you know, I made the jump. I also have a newsletter at nodeland.dev, so if you want to follow my progress in Nodeland, in the, my Node adventures, you can check it out. So, uh, I also, you're also using my software, big time. Uh, ye, all my software is being downloaded 22 billion times last year, on uh, and this is uh, you know all the uh, all my modules on npm it's, wow it's impossible right sounds like it but if you like them please um, put some cash on my guitar sponsors that's always appreciated so uh, let's jump into node so uh, in in the last few years there have been a, quite a few sentences about uh, coming out from other runtimes uh, one said very bluntly uh, that will destroy Node.js and nobody will use Node.js anymore in a few years and um, that didn't materialize, luckily, or not, maybe, I don't know, you, up to you to decide. Another one very recently said that we'll flip the default backend JavaScript runtime from Node.js. Again, um, finger crossed, it doesn't happen or maybe you hope it happens, I don't know, up to you to decide. So anyway, um, this talk is about debunking those statements and showing you that Node.js is alive and healthy and shipping things. And, you know, it's up to you to use those things, those new things. So, um, yeah, so is Node.js dead yet? And the quest this is a question for you if Node is dead or not. And I'm trying to give you some data points. So, well, for me, it's not dead, okay? Oh, really not dead. But look, um, let me show you a secret, okay? And this is actually a very, very tightly kept secret that no one will tell you, okay? Um, a technology that was born in 1959 is on the rise. What? A technology, a programming language that was born in 1959 is on the rise? So what are we doing wrong here? We are doing all these new, whatever, new framework things. Well, uh, according to the latest Tiob index, uh, COBOL is on the rise. It actually surpassed, I think, Ruby, or it's of, down there between Ruby and Rust in terms of popularity. What? It did seem those two things were all the hype, okay? But it's just there between Ruby, COBOL is there, okay? COBOL was born in 1959, so... Ouch, it's super popular still, and there is still a, a, a huge amount of demand about COBOL programmers out there in the world. So, um, you know, it doesn't seem like technology has destroyed or die uh, popular technologies. But look, let's take a look at jQuery. And uh, currently jQuery is used by 1940, 1940%, 95, something like that, percent of the JavaScript enabled websites and possibly something like 77% of the total websites in the world. And, oh, okay, super popular, super popular, really. And um, they just ship V4, by the way, so you might want to check it out if you are using jQuery. So, okay, and those technology were born way, lay, way, way earlier than, than, than Node.js, okay? In fact, Node.js was, is just, going through its 15th birthday. So, hey, it's going pretty well, right? But also, according to Stack Overflow, it's the most popular technology. Oh, 
really. Wow. 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 It's pretty impressive, right? In fact, it's part of its big success, and I think this is the primary reason for its huge success, is the fact that um, uh, Node.js, that uh, the combo of uh, uh, Node.js plus NPM uh, make it a massive success. And in fact, we can see that NPM registry um, grew to uh, massive heights. In fact, we can say uh, without any any doubt that uh, the uh, Node.js and NPM combo uh, fixed software reuse. Okay, we enabled software reuse at a scale that was not possible before. Wow, seems crazy. I don't know. I I really think this is it's this this type of growth is fantastic. Um, in fact, even uh, 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 modules usage uh, also grew. Okay, uh, I am one of the maintainer of this module called Readable Stream. is one of the fourth most downloaded module on NPM, and it grew up from I don't know uh, more or less three billion downloads in twenty in twenty twenty to um, close to seven billion downloads on um, twenty twenty three. Wow. Okay, so imagine that this is one of the, this to show you the growth in download numbers of the ecosystem, okay? So in, in more or less uh, three years, it doubled in terms of uh, usage of those modules. Seems, you know, it's everywhere. Like this software is literally everywhere. In fact, you are probably using this software every day. Like every day you're using this software. So. Uh, let's take a look at the number of down of the downloads of Node.js, okay? And as you can see here, we have the number of uh, the, the downloads uh, are stacked. So this is a graph of the downloads that are stacked. So the total numbers of downloads from of the Node.js of Node.js are around 130 uh, uh, millions per um, per month, okay? However, a good chunk of those are headers. So let's uh, let's unpack this, okay? So we get more or less um, 65 million in Feb last February. We got 65 million downloads uh, just for the headers file. What are the headers files, okay? When you're doing npm i on Node.js, you are um, uh, you you might be downloading the headers if you need to compile a binary add-on. So. Imagine that you need to bid to compile a binary add-on. If you need to, then you download the headers file so you can you, Node.js can do its magic now, and the compiler can do its magic so you can actually use your binary add-on. And binary add-on are super popular. One of the ways that Node.js got so popular is because of binary add-ons. So um, look, look at it. It's really, really big. So, and it, this means that more or less when you see these address numbers, it's really npm eyes. Okay, this is a lot of npm eyes happening for the first time because then it's cached. Now, also there's a lot of downloads per operating systems and we can see that the vast majority is Linux. Uh, this is downloaded of new Node.js version when you uh, do a Node.js, when we release a new Node.js version, it's, uh, um, it typically happens uh, that you download it, okay? And, uh, and then you're not installing it anymore. So, and it's good, and you can see that there is Linux, okay? And then we have uh, Windows and OS X uh, in terms of um, usage, and Linux is probably for all your CI runs. Um, note that this more or less accounts to 30 million downloads in 2021 in total, and with 50 million downloads of Node.js binaries in 2024, it seems really great growth and really great usage of Node.js, but it's also a mature product. So it's more or less in every developer machines at this point. Uh, but unfortunately, you are not updating it. Okay, you are not updating Node.js. Sorry, I, I, I'm saying it correctly. You're not updating Node. You're not, you're just not, okay? Why I'm saying this? Well, let's unpack the data, okay? Oh, also, you're putting yourself at grave risk, okay? Now let's take a look, let's look at the, at the release schedule. So um, in Node.js, you see we have this form of support long-term schedule. We have the main branch, which is what, what you call unstable. You can go and download it and build it anytime. We have nightly builds so that you can test it along the run. Then we have uh, a, a long-term support phase. 
which it's um, currently set up in this way. And as you can see, we have uh, node 14 is gone, node 16 is gone. Node 18 is you know, supported, but it's actually in maintenance mode. It's not going to ship new features or new features in. And it will, the re-release will be a very uh, every now and then, okay? There's not going to be a fixed release schedule. Uh, and then there is no 20 that just enter LTS on October. Oh, wait a second. So you're saying that if I'm using, if you're using Node 16 and Node, and before you are in danger. Yes, you are. There are unpatched security vulnerabilities on those and you should be updating now. So uh, uh, what does it mean for numbers? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so um, I graphed all the, the downloads till February and uh, as you can see, uh, Node 16 is still was still downloaded something around 25-ish uh, million times in uh, uh, February, which is uh, incredible, okay? And it's considering that it's vulnerable software, okay? Also, Node 14, which is even older than that, was downloaded uh, around more or less 10 million times. And still people are using 12 and Node 10 even, which is super far behind. So, wow. So this is what I'm saying, people are not updating Node, okay? And also, um, what I'm seeing, what we are seeing is people update Node.js every two LTS releases. So typically the people that are um, uh, uh, migrating off 16 are actually starting to use 20 now. So they move from 16 to 20, and then probably when the people that will go from uh, 18 will go to 22. So again, uh, this is actually very important to know, but you should keep this cadence of updating your Node.js runtime. Otherwise, you will be in trouble with security vulnerabilities. Um, also, take the this is the download numbers of 2023 for uh, Docker, for from from the Docker from Docker Hub, which we got more, more or less 800 million downloads from those, which shows how much you're using the Docker images as well as another way of installing Node.js and running Node.js in production, probably. So. Um, the uh, organization had a massive, um, uh, massive amount of uh, activity in it. In fact, we got a phenomenal twenty-one thousand review pull request reviews on on the project on the full Node.js org. Consider this: like individuals reviewed code twenty-one thousand times. This is amazing amount of effort. We, we got uh, 4,700 pull requests in that were reviewed 21,000 times. So you can see that every, every pull request got more or less on average uh, a, a good amount of, uh, of reviews between I don't know, six and seven, something like that. And, um, and so, wow. And then there's a lot, also a lot, a huge amount of issues and so on and so forth. Really, like I cannot say that this was fantastic. Okay, this data was captured from OSS Insights. So, in fact, if we can even just take a look at the pushes from Node.js to, to Node.js Core, we can see that uh, uh, there was a lot of activity and lot of uh, and lot of comments happening on on, on Node.js. We can typically see the spike around the summer because we typically have a, a, a new LTS release, a, a new release uh, that will become LTS in October. So there's a lot of spike activity around that time, as well as May, uh, as well as April, May with the landing of the new version. So there is, that's probably the, 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 how you see the graph going. But look, you know, project it seems super healthy. And um, note that the total number of pull requests is, uh, 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 mostly stable, okay? And we got huge amount of pull requests happening all the time, and this keep growing and growing, of course, and we keep receiving them all the time uh, across the history of the project. So in the last few years, more or less, the amount of time, the amount of them has been more or less stable. So um, going back to talking about security, okay? We work hard to keep you safe. So, um, in fact, there has been a huge amount of security submissions per year that the team needs to tackle. So, um, submissions are not vulnerabilities, it's just things that need to be handled by the team. Like last year, we got 
80 reports. 80 reports needs to be uh, assessed uh, clearly by one of us. This typically falls on the Node.js TSC and selected individuals. So this is actually a lot of work. Okay, uh, just consider reporting, looking at this report and assessing them and replying to them. You cannot consider that a security report is not ignorable. It's like a silver bullet. You almost stop whatever you are doing and start handling it when you receive one. So, and we have a full process of security rotation so that multiple members of the Node.js TSC cross between the, uh, go between themselves and they organize their work so that they, come, they cover uh, all of it. Um, they cover all the time uh, with a very short response time. In fact, the actual response time was actually very good. Okay, We have a, a target response time of five, more or less five days, and we have been um, essentially uh, uh, very good at it. Okay, In fact, uh, we have um, typically we respond in less than one day or even just a few hours after a report happens. And uh, uh, more or less the standard in the industry is five days, but we uh, are very, very uh, phenomenal in responding it in just a few hours and addressing all sorts of problems in a matter of um, very quickly. Now, security releases typically, which we do once, we do one once per quarter. So this means that uh, then the, we batch all the secure, all the all the vulnerabilities into one, and we deal with them and we reship them. But this is uh, what it's what what this means. Um, it once we do the first response, then it takes some time to triage. And it's actually pretty good. So, uh, uh, last but not least, I all of these will not be possible without the help of the uh, OpenSSF, the Open Source Security Foundation, that uh, helped us secure a grant from uh, Alpha Omega, which was a project started in uh, 2022 to uh, help key projects. So this is the description that I put it from get from the website, and. Uh, the point is, uh, these critical vendors, these critical companies called Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and so on, uh, put in some funds to help uh, secure, um, to help fix vulnerabilities when, uh, when and very quickly on, on critical open source software that's not made by a company like, open, uh, like Node.js. And in fact, we got quite a lot of funding uh, uh, for it, and which were able to sponsor uh, the work. So we got funding in 2022, 2023, and 2024. Uh, which is really great. And without this funding, we will not be able to do all the security work that we are doing. So, yeah, pretty impressive. So, uh, we talked a lot about the stats. Now, what features did we ship in the last few years? Okay. So, first of all, um, we shipped ESM. Okay. Quite a lot of you are familiar now with ESM and how ESM in Node works. But look, um, quite a few people said Node.js will never ship ESM. And uh, we actually did. Um, also, we shipped worker threads, which uh, are actually uh, enabling some part of ESM now. But, you know, this is a long discussion. But we ship threads. You have multi-threading in Node, okay? But look, um, the, the, we, this is a phenomenal amount of work. And thank, uh, thanks to uh, Anna Ensing and to, 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 take, to tackle it a few years back. Now, what did we ship to? Well, you know, we didn't stop trying to make fetch happen. Okay, we actually didn't, and you can. Oh, sorry. And we actually now have no fetch in Node.js again, and this is actually spec compatible, or we try to to be as spec compatible as possible. So, with some uh, sprinkled addition to to Node. Wow, this is unbelievable. So uh, we also have quite a lot of things uh, that make it compatible with the web platform. Uh, we got, uh, we have fetch, we have web streams, we have form data, structure clone, um, text encoder and decoder, blob, event target file, and so on and so forth. Well, we ship promises, come on, okay? In fact, a read file from a fast promises is one of my favorite method, okay? And you could do that very easily. Um, and we started doing Node Core only modules so that we um, don't lay too much of a, an additional claim into the namespace of the registry, and we can just ship the names that we want by saying node colon test. And we shipped watch mode. 
like node mon is one of the most favorite thing ever by everybody and we started adding this to node core and thanks to all the node module maintain node mon maintainers that will be such a great inspiration and uh, we also did a lot of refactoring to create something called a sync local storage. And you might wonder what is, why is this important and why a sync local storage is such a critical feature. Well, without a sync local storage, you will not have had a React server component, for example. React server component is one of the critical pieces that makes, uh, 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 sorry, a sync local storage is one of the critical pieces that makes uh, React server components possible blew my mind when I found out. Uh, we also shipped web crypto, and this is something that helps everybody in making their apps safer. Uh, we started doing, adding also a lot of utilities like util parse args, because look, um, you shouldn't really need to use an external module to parse your command line arguments, even though I still use Minimist, so. Um, we started iterating on the concept of single executable application, so you can take your app, stitch it to Node, and create a single executable to distribute. This is super powerful if you want to build a CLI and distribute it to your users. It was great. Originally, it was developed by Postman Labs, but now it's part of Node.js. Then we have uh, we started iterating on implementing a permission system. Uh, still experimental, still a lot of things to be figured out here, but it's happening. So hopefully in the future we will, can get things safer. And we ship the test runner. Like the test runner no test module is one of the my most favorite thing that we ship and I use this every single day. And I have uh, a good talk about it, about uh, adding TypeScript, adding a lot of other functionality to it. You can check it out. It's on my YouTube. Uh, it's great. It's, and this library called Borp that I wraps it. Anyway, Use, use the node colon test module. It's great, I love it. And it just fixes all the problem for me. And you can just use it more or less if you use uh, Mocha, Tap, it's more or less familiar with all of those. And uh, to me, it's just great. So um, you can check it out. So are you using the new Node.js features or are you still stuck in 2015? Let me know. Well. Let's take a look at what's coming in V2022. Uh, they, they just landed in, 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 uh, on, the main, uh, on the main repo and on the main branch. And look, I'm so excited about these features that I cannot, I, I, I must mention them. First of all, we are shipping a new flag, experiment dash dash experimental dash require dash module that will allow you to require ESM modules synchronously. It's unbelievable, okay? Thanks to Joey and uh, uh, Bloomberg to, for this work. And really what you should all be doing is literally, oh, when can I have this? Like this, everybody needs this yesterday. So thanks for them to, to do the work. Also, we added a new, another, another uh, flag called ex dash dash experimental dash detect dash module that will automatically uh, uh, allow you to allow you to allow uh, Node.js to detect if a uh, module is CommonJS or ESM and desume it from that. And this is actually very, very useful. And it's actually simplified the writing of bash script and this, of shell scripts in, in JavaScript, small scripts in JavaScript and so on and so forth. But you should really be keeping putting the type uh, in your modules, essentially. And WebSocket is coming. Like this is one of the you know other biggest feature requests from everybody uh, for Node.js. And we actually shipped a WebSocket. We are actually shipping a WebSocket uh, client in Node 22. So you, uh, it happens, okay? And thanks to uh, Matthew Atkin for implementing this, okay? And this will not be possible without all the great work about the WS module and all the other WebSocket implementation for Node.js, so. But this is spec compliant, okay? So, you know, in case you care. If not, you're probably better to stick with the WS module, but this is a totally different talk. So, uh, working on Node.js core is not always that relaxing. Um, 
but we really need more help, okay? Like we really, 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 really need more people to tangle, to start working on the project and help us out. Um, in fact, it's an organization driven by volunteers. So if we, um, if we don't have people to implement features or fix bugs, nothing happens. So there's no, uh, there are very, very few people that are uh, employed by the organization to work on Node.js and all of those are mostly part-time. So all the other work happens via from the community to the community. So, hey. Um, so uh, how does the project work? Well, it's based on the concept of open governance. And it's part of one of the key tenants of the OpenJS Foundation as well, which is our parent organization. Uh, the, key, the, the, the maintainers of Node.js and the people responsible for Node are the Node.js collaborators. The Node.js collaborators are the people that uh, uh, implement things, okay? And typically, it's uh, uh, they are the main people. Node.js collaborators do most of the work. They review the pull request, they land the pull requests, they approve the pull requests. Now, if, um, but you have heard a lot about the Node.js TSC. The Node.js TSC actually kicks in only if collaborators are not in agreement. So if I want to do something and my friend Robert doesn't want to, then uh, we can say, oh, we can make a decision. We can find a compromise that will sweep both of us. So uh, TSC, please make a decision. So uh, typically the TSC is an organization to untangle the, uh, the, the deadlocks. The Node.js TSC is composed of uh, voting members and they do, they have also a few key descriptions, so a few key responsibilities. Typically it's, uh, uh, the, uh, they are related to setting the release dates, keeping a certain level of quality standard, and hosting the repository and mediating conflicts. Yay. So there is a vote if there is a disagreement. So, and um, more importantly though, the TSC means that uh, no more than one fourth of the TSC member can be affiliated with the same employer. What does this mean in practice? Well, it means that uh, no one can control Node.js. And this, you know, freaks a lot of people out because you cannot control Node, okay? Node is based by the volunteers, is based by the, all the people that work with, with each other. So you need to convince other people to uh, uh, implement things and, and, certain, and the benefits of a certain approach. So having said that, you know, typically this means you need to be uh, willing to compromise. So if you want to implement a certain feature, you might be willing to compromise on a certain part of it to, uh, uh, to, be, able to, make, to, to be able to make it uh, approved by others. So, well, when are you starting? Okay. Uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if you want to have a say in the future of Node.js, you should start contributing. Okay. If you don't like certain things, well, you might want to start working on the project. Okay. And yeah, that's it. Um, so, as I said, I am um, I'm Matteo Collina, co-founder and CTO of Platformatic, and thank you very much. Bye!